talk about um, cancer cells, that was one of the questions um, one of our customers had is she is a um, six year, I think, survivor of breast cancer. And while she wants the very best for her skin, obviously her health um, is more important. Yeah. Um, with yeah. so many people out there, that's one of the main questions we have. So she's aware that you know products can say oncology approved, oncology safe, but is it really safe? Can she feel confident in applying um, neogenesis to her skin and not feeling like, oh no, I'm like taking a gamble? Yeah, you, one has to be very careful um, with cancer, particularly mm -hmm. as we age. Um, mm -hmm. So, so these are these are very important questions. And to to give you an idea of the cell types and the molecules that we use. Um, Beginning back in the late 1800s, a German physician scientist started doing um, really fat pads uh, transfers. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so people, you know, who had damaged in the face, mm -hmm. the physician surgeon um, in Germany started taking fat uh, from other parts of the body and then stitching it back up and then placing it into the face. Um, and it really started the long history of using fat and skin flaps. Mm -hmm. so a lot of skin flaps are used where you're using the full skin thickness from the you know epidermis down to the hypodermis, including mm -hmm. the adipose mesenchymal stem cells, the fibroblast. You know, long story short, there is a very long history. It's it's part of the reason why I chose to use these cells, because there is such a long demonstrated safe history of using not only adipose mesenchymal stem cells and fibroblasts, but the, you know, the adipocytes, the fat themselves, mm -hmm. and using it to reconstruct patients who have had breast cancer and who unfortunately have had breast tissue removed, mm -hmm. who had reconstruction in order to properly do the reconstruction the physicians very carefully use fat transfer. And now, and there's just a, a big review on it a couple of years ago by a physician scientist at Stanford University School of Medicine, where they looked at the long-term history, efficacy, and safety of using fat with adipose mesenchymal stem cells mm -hmm. to do these fat transfers. And the adipose mesenchymal stem cells and fibroblast are perfectly safe. So they've they followed patients who've been reconstructed, patients who have had lymphedema following, you know, breast cancer surgery. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And following patients for a year, some of the studies up to three years, to make sure there's no increased incidence of cancer using mesenchymal stem cells from fat, using fibroblasts, using adipocytes. And if you do it carefully, there is no increased incidence of cancer. And with, you know, so much information out there on the Internet everywhere, you know, it takes a while, too, for people to finally trust that information, the new information that they're given, whether it's, you know, backed by a clinical study or not. Sometimes it's it's almost the fear takes over. So perfect. I love that answer. So thank you. <laughs> so then I think my next question um, you're probably, it's probably going to be a huge discussion, but I'll ask it anyway. So somebody wants to know, can they use different growth factors from different companies in the same routine? So say, for instance, and I don't know if this is their question, but, um, you know, they already have a growth factor serum from somebody else. Can they pop in a drop of recovery or booster with that? Or, you know, it just depends on the kind of growth factors. It depends on the company. It depends on the science which is probably what I think you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the short answer probably is... Probably a lot better, more eloquently than I just did. But <laughs> no, you, you said it very well that everyone can understand, so thank you, Leah. But, um, <laughs> yeah, you can use um, our recovery, our other products, um, with other so-called growth factor products. I would just be careful as to the other product that I use. I mm -hmm. would use those products that were developed by dermatologists and stem cell scientists mm -hmm. 
that utilize the stem cells and therefore the molecules that derive from the epidermis, the dermis, and the hypodermis. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of companies that do that, but there unfortunately are other companies that, you know, haven't learned those lessons. But right. yes, you can use combinations, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, I think you're gonna have a lot of people rethinking what they're applying to their skin after this video. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, it's it's um it's a never-ending battle to understand the skin and work what works best. Mm -hmm. And you know that is my main mission in life is to do the science and technology development. So hopefully, and things are becoming mm -hmm. better and better as we learn more about the skin. Well, vitamin A in skincare, you know, is considered like the gold standard. Do you feel like growth factors are like the unsung hero or there should be like a place where, you know, there's vitamin A just as important as growth factors? Like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, see, so I'm a systems biologist looking at the components to build the whole. Right. So if you have a, if you have a puzzle and you want to see the picture in the puzzle, you have to put all the pieces in. Mm -hmm. So vitamin A is one piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. Growth factors and all the other molecules that the fibroblast and mesenchymal stem cells from the skin release are a number of the other factors. So mm -hmm. they're both very important. Absolutely. The, the vitamin A, um, really, when you look at the studies, a lot of the studies for vitamin A benefit in the skin, and there is. Mm -hmm. There can be great benefit of topical vitamin A or, or analogs of vitamin A. Mm -hmm. I should know this better. You know, my, um, my scientific great-grandfather was George Wald at Harvard, and he won the Nobel Prize for his work on vitamin A. Oh, awesome. So vitamin A is so important, it's even in the visual system. Mm -hmm. So when, uh, when the light comes into the eye, mm -hmm. it's the photoreceptor, the photon, the light, interacts with a type of vitamin A molecule and changes, it, changes its structure and it's turned into chemical mm -hmm. electrical energy. But vitamin A is so critical, what I'm mm -hmm. saying to bodily function, including the skin. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to your point, you know, I always say vitamin A, growth factors, vitamin C. And, you know, I think each one definitely um, does a different thing in the skin. Like, you know, when if you're trying to regenerate the skin, repair the skin, if the skin, um, you know, is sick per se, I want to use the growth factors, not so much a vitamin A, because they just yeah. work so differently. Yeah. You know, I want something, you know, very nutritious and reparative for the skin, so I'd reach for that growth factor. What we do to the skin for all these chronic inflammatory diseases, and one mm -hmm. of the things that we can do as skincare providers is to feed our keratinocyte stem cells mm -hmm. what they need from the outside in. Absolutely. Completely agree with that. Yeah, and, you know, you made a point earlier um, in this discussion that, you know, depending on how, um, you know, the barrier function is, you know, it can let in a lot more negative things. And that's what I always tell people, too, with my consults. You know, you may want to treat acne. You may want to treat pigment. But until, like, if you're showing me that your skin's really red, it's really dry, it's really irritated, we're going to treat that first and make sure that, you know, your barrier um, function and everything is intact because there's yep. no point in treating a disease if, you're, if your skin's still going to allow all these negative, uh, you know, everything going on around oh, you uh, into the skin. So that's yeah, so, absolutely. that's so great to hear. Th this, yeah. is, <laughs> this is really looking at, mm -hmm. you know, the whole system, looking at the system mm -hmm. of the skin, instead of saying, hey, there is this disease state, mm -hmm. you know, and let's put this immune modulator yep. onto the skin to treat it without restoring barrier function and all those things mm -hmm. that are making it irritated and inflamed to begin with. Mm -hmm. So th this is really, really important. Um, you know, we're seeing this with, with cancer patients as well. There's a new movement you aware of probably more than I am about palliative care for cancer patients. And part mm -hmm. of that palliative care is treatment of the skin. 
Mm -hmm. You have, you know, you have people, especially going through um, radiation treatment. So they're being highly irradiated, Mm -hmm. uh, different forms, but lots of ionizing radiation damaging the skin. And, you know, there's a, there's a physicist properly dosing the radiation. There's an oncologist making sure the cancer is mm-hmm. being treated correctly. But then, you know, they don't know enough to say, hey, here's what you need to treat that skin mm-hmm. um, and to rebuild it and to calm the inflammation, both of which are critical to not seeing more cancer. Absolutely. And so... There are now a number of scientists and physicians looking critically at palliative care and how important it is not only to, you know, better treat the cancer, but to also treat the skin and chronic inflammation and the general well-being of the, of the cancer patient. So you think about it, an oncologist, you know, he or she is focused on treating that cancer. Absolutely. And not so mm-hmm. focused on radiation dermatitis. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, thank God they're focused on that. But then that patient needs to see the treatment for the, mm-hmm. you know, the collateral damage, so to speak. Oh, ab- absolutely. Um, I completely agree with that. Yeah, their main focus is definitely, you know, killing the immediate attack, but they don't think long term, unfortunately, of, you know, the patient's you know, life, lifestyle, long-term. So, yeah, yeah, and it's more so not even just the skin. I think and that really, you know, when it comes to radiation, it can, depending on where they're radiating, whether it's the brain, they don't think about long-term of how much radiation they're actually giving at the same time for long-term benefits of the brain too. So it's interesting. That's a whole other discussion. That is. That's another (laughs) couple of hours worth of talk. Well, I have one more question, and this one should be fun for you. I'm sure they all were. But, um, okay, all (laughs) of your babies, all of your serums, which one is your favorite? Which one are you most proud of? Do you have a most proud of serum, and, like, why, if you have one? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I... um, if, if I'm allowed to answer it this way, I, I particularly love, um, we sell them together. So you, you can buy recovery and the barrier renewal cream together. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and I love this because the recovery really is all about the stem cell released molecules, mm-hmm. which put in many of those molecules the skin needs to rebuild the, the hypodermis, the dermis, the base of the membrane that connects the dermal layer with the epidermal layer. Mm-hmm. And actually, these molecules actually help control the formation of the epidermal layer in the stratum corneum and mm-hmm. increase, for example, ceramide production. So I love that one because it really rebuilds all the way, helps to, helps to rebuild all the way from hypodermis, you know, fat pad, mm-hmm. up to outer layer, distal layer stratum, you know, of epidermis, the stratum corneum. But then I love the combination with the barrier renewal cream because we're also directly feeding what those other scientists found out. You're feeding into the keratinocytes what they need to build those beautiful, you know, lamellar lipid bodies that they form the stratum corneum with. Um, so, you know, I love the combination of molecules <laughs> where you're you're putting in to the skin from the stem cells what the stem cells normally feed the skin when it's young and healthy. Mm-hmm. And when you do this, you actually rebuild you help rebuild the niche where the resident stem cells are. So the stem cells in your skin are working more efficiently. Mm-hmm. You do this. And you're feeding into the skin all of the instruction set molecules, the building block molecules, the pro-collagens, laminins, the HAPLN1s, the different antioxidants, the proteasomes, the chaperones that rebuild the proteins, um, make them normal. Um, 
So you're doing all of that with those molecules, but then with the barrier renewal cream, you're also feeding in the lipids and some of the other molecules that the other stem cells, the keratinocytes, need. They need mm -hmm. that. They need to eat those, so to speak, in order to build that stratum corneum. So my, I love my little combination of those two products. Perfect. I'm going to, I haven't started using the barrier recovery, but you just talked me into it. <laughs> okay, Dr. McGuire, it was such a pleasure. Wow, I feel like 10 hundred times smarter, like talking to you <laughs> for the last hour. <laughs> I don't know if 10 hundred is a word, but anyway. <laughs> but thank you so much. I definitely can't wait to have you back on our channel. I know everybody's going to absolutely love you um, and have tons of questions from everything that you just went over. So thank you so much. Leah, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you and your group. Mm -hmm. And thank you for all of the good things you do with all of your clients and as an educator for all of us. Thank you very much. Hey, my pleasure. Absolutely. You guys created a great product that I, I love telling everybody about. So. Thank you so much. <laughs>